Welcome fellow phoenixes to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast, where we make a daily offering to the divine by putting our past on the pyre, searching the smoke for spirituality, turning the ashes into art, adapting isolation into connection, and manifesting mental wellness. I'm a spiritual phoenix named Ross Cessna, and I wish to ignite the authentic expression of your soul into any avenue that elevates consciousness. I don't want to tell you what to think, but to get you to think and originally articulate yourself in a way that is uplifting. We are the artists of our lives, and today is a blank canvas. Let's collectively create a better tomorrow. Um, and I'd like to uh, take a moment and focus on what we're grateful for today. Today, I'm grateful for um, all the small little changes I've made over the past uh, six, five, six months or so um, because they've changed my life in a big way. And now I'd like to get into uh, a couple quotes. Incremental change is better than ambitious failure. Success feeds on itself. And that was said by Tal Ben-Shahar. The habit of persistence is the habit of victory. And that was said by Herbert Kaufman. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. And that was said by Confucius. And uh, I'd like to get into what I call uh, the philosophy of natural change or the philosophy of persistent in incrementalism. And um, I'll explain it a little bit and then I'll get into uh, a, a further in-depth thing of it. Um, I like to play the guitar and one of the things about guitar is uh, it's better to play 15 minutes a day than one hour one time a week and a lot of people when they start something new they jump into it full-heartedly uh, and they put all of their energy into it and then when they're not instantly successful or they have this big intangible goal that they can't achieve they then feel somewhat defeated. Um, and I think that that's natural. I think in a culture that really thrives upon um, instant gratification, that that mindset is very, very normal. Um, what I've found though, is that when I do that, it's not necessarily the best approach. I mean, even with um, what I'm doing in business and things like that, trying to grow my business now, I found that when I put out all this energy, I end up getting burnt out and I don't necessarily make things as smooth or as polished as I would like them to be because I get to a point where I, I rush and because I just want to be done with it. And the, the biggest changes I've made in my life have been small little tangible things. And this philosophy will work um, it's helped me overcome depression. Um, it, it's helped me work with my mental illness or my mental health diagnosis, I should say. And I have several if and then statements. Um, if I use, if I want to make a mon monumental change quickly, then it will take a monumental effort. If I use monumental effort persistently, then I will burn out, be miserable, or fail often or fail often as a result of being either burnt out or miserable sometimes both if I fail often then I will be less likely to try new things as I will build the belief I always fail if I make daily persistent efforts by breaking down tasks into manageable increments then or then I will be able to accomplish large tasks over time with minimal effort if I use minimal effort persistently, then I will be more energized, happy, and successful as a result of feeling energized, happy, and successful. If I succeed often, then I will be more likely to try new things as I will build the belief that I am successful. Um, and big outputs of instant energy in nature tend to be destructive and most things in nature happen slowly. And to uh, just list a couple of big changes that occur in, in nature um, 
The examples would be tidal waves, huge output of energy and it's very destructive. Tornadoes, huge output of energy, destructive. Earthquakes, huge output of energy, destructive. Hurricanes, huge output of energy, destructive. Volcanoes, huge output of energy, destructive. And now if we look at the uh, slow, persistent energy in nature, um, it can still cause massive change, but usually without all the collateral damage. Um, let's, if you think of water erosion, that's normally slow water on rock over a period of time. And the Grand Canyon, that huge, that huge divot in the Grand Canyon was caused by water erosion over millions of years. And granted, you're like, I don't have millions of years. You don't need millions of years to accomplish your goals. And once you do this consistently, you'll become more efficient. And when you become more efficient, you can put a little bit more energy into it. Um, another thing would be uh, wind erosion. Sand is broken down rock, and that rock wasn't always sand. In many cases, it was larger rocks that over time were either eroded by water or by wind. And wind can blow that sand, and it can erode a lot of things. I mean, the Sphinx, for example, has been really um, smoothed over to where the definition of it has been taken down by wind erosion. Um, another example of slow, persistent, um, incremental change would be the growth of a tree. I mean, it starts out as, as that wee little seed and it, it grows every day for years and it develops. Um, development of a baby, that, that again, it's very slow overall. I mean, from a human's perspective, it's slow. But it changes, um, it, it creates a whole new person. And I mean, bit by bit by bit. I, I think that if babies were created the instant that they were made, it would probably be a horrible experience for everybody involved. Um, evolution, I mean, there are some mutations or things that happen quickly. Many times those aren't the healthiest ones. Um, evolution happens out of necessity as environments adapt slowly and change or as certain food sources change or things like that. And then these organisms adapt to meet the required needs of it. Um, the formation of a planet. And again, that the initial structure of it may happen from a quick collision or something like that. But that's m millions, maybe billions of years. I don't, I don't have the actual numbers in front of me on that one, so I'm not gonna say a specific time frame. And granted, they're all different, but gravity collects these little bits of dust into little bits of dust, rock and stuff into a planet. Then that planet begins to develop an atmosphere um, then the atmosphere can develop life like it did on Earth, like single cell organisms. Then those develop into something bigger, bigger, bigger. I mean, it's, it's natural for things to go slowly and develop things. I mean, when I started meditating again um, in September, October-ish, if I would have started out trying to meditate 20 or 30 minutes at a time, I would have successfully failed <laughs> every time. I started out with five minutes and that five minutes has grown. Um, I don't always do more than five minutes. To me, that's a good little reminder. Um, I mean, even with, I'm writing a couple books right now. I don't sit there and plug away at the book all day. I write a little bit. I write an article or something. I write something down. I put it in a word file and it's slowly building. I'm building a book of quotes. Find a couple quotes a day, plug it in there. In a year I'll have a book. I don't need to have it 
done that quickly. And if you have depression um, and you're like, I don't ever accomplish anything. I can't get out of the house. I can't do anything. Get up and do one thing that you can do. Do something fun. Do something that invigorates you. Uh, dust, you know, um, paint. Go for a walk. If you have social anxiety, incrementally get yourself used to social situations. I mean, sometimes you have to take the big plunge. And if you use your energy wisely and you incrementally include new things, when you want to jump in and try something wholeheartedly, you have the energy to do so because you don't do everything like that. And that's from my personal experience. If you have a way that works for you where you're able to go um, all in all the time, I'd like to know your philosophy, what, what that is, because I've tried that and I'm not successful that way. And then I feel like crap because of it. Um, that's really all I can say on this without being cyclical. Um, so I'm going to put this one on the pyre. There is uh, a link to uh, my website and there's also uh, my social media. It's at Spiritual Phoenix. S-P-I-R-I... Wait, S-P-I-R-I-T-U-A-L-F-O-E-N-I-X. Um... And that's on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Uh, what else? You can go to my website, www.thespiritualphoenix.com. I have videos up there, some articles, my tarot card readings, and what not. Um, if you could please take the time to respond to the PodTrack listener survey, it'll help me better understand my audience. And if you're listening to me talk, you can... Uh, Watch me on YouTube, or if you're watching me on YouTube, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, um, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Blueberry. With that, I love, respect, and appreciate all of you. Make today magical with the attitude of gratitude and a mindset of manifestation. Love and light. Namaste.